Numerical Computation, Chapter 8, Video 3. We now look at linear least square method in the general setting. So, um, given the data set x, k, y, k, and also we are given m plus 1 functions, let's call them g0, g1, g2, and all the way to gn. These are linearly independent. And we search for a function which is a linear combination of all these g's in this way, that is, each gi is multiplied by some coefficient ci, and we add them all up. So we want to find a combination of these functions such that, in the end, the function y best fit the data in the least square sense. So these gi's, and they are called basis functions. We now define the arrow function, um, which is a function of all the coefficients c's, and the arrow is defined as um, taking the arrow at every point and square it and sum it all up. And if we pr um, plug in the expression for the function y, this is what we will get. And the y is the summation of ci times gi evaluated at xk, okay, minus yk, the whole thing squared. Okay, so we also know that at the minimum for this function psi, we must have the following. The first derivative of psi in every c with index j shall equal to 0, where j runs from 0, 1, and to n. Okay, so working out the detail, this partial derivative of this expression here with respect to cj, by the chain rule, we have 2 times the whole thing here, multiply by this whole thing, differentiated in cj, thinking everything else is constant. So we know yk is a constant, differentiating it gets 0. And in this summation sign, there will be one value of i that matches the index j. And all the other terms are treated as constant, so you differentiate it, and they become 0. So for that term, where you have i matching j, you differentiate this expression in cj, which you have will be the coefficient in front of cj, which is exactly g, j at x, k. Okay, so, and this equation holds for all j's. And we see that um, the number 2 doesn't really matter. We can um, cross it out. So we can um, rearrange the ordering of the summation sign and also move this term here, yk times um, gj at xk. We can move it to the right-hand side so here. And the left-hand side becomes a double summation of ci gi xk times gj xk. And then we see that ci doesn't have anything to do with the index you're, into, you're summing, that's the k. So you can take the ci out and sum this thing over all k's first, and then multiply by ci, and then sum all this over i. Okay, so here is again that last equation on the previous um, page. We see that we can um, rewrite this into a matrix vector form, that is a A matrix times a C vector equals to some right-hand side B vector. Here the C vector is the collection of my unknowns, C0 to Cn. And uh, the A matrix is the coefficient matrix. Let's write each element of it as Aij. And the value of Aij is exactly um, this expression here the thing that's in front of ci for the equation number j. So it's the sum of gi times gj evaluated at xk. And the b is the right-hand side vector, which is just this term here for each j. So that bj equal to that. Okay. So in the end, we have, again, a system ax equal to b, or okay, ac equals to b to solve. And we also notice that the A matrix here is symmetric because Aij simply equals to Aji because if you switch I with J, this product gives you the same thing. 
and if the choices of your basis functions are that they are linearly independent, then we know the A matrix is non-singular and it's invertible, so the system A C equal to B will have a unique solution. So um, that's all and hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.